Uh, what you're proposing, or what the president is proposing here, does not sound like it's in keeping with American tradition when it comes to immigration. The Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, you're in to breathe free. It doesn't say anything about speaking English or being able to uh, compu be a computer programmer. Uh, aren't you trying to change what it means to be an immigrant coming into this country if, if you're telling them uh, you have to speak English? Uh, can't people learn how to speak English when they get here? Well, first of all, right now, it's a requirement that to be naturalized, you have to speak English. So the notion that speaking English wouldn't be a part of our immigration systems would be actually very ahistorical. Secondly, I don't want to get off into a whole thing about history here, but the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of liberty enlightening the world. It's a symbol of American liberty lighting the world. The poem that you're referring to that was added later is not actually part of the original Statue of Liberty, but more fundamentally, the you're history, saying, they, but saying, more fundamentally, you're saying the that history, that does not represent. I'm saying that I'm the saying that the notion. I'm saying the notion that the. I'm saying the notion. I'm sorry. No, that sounds like that sounds Jim, like. Let me ask you a question. That sounds like some uh, national park revisionism. No, the what I'm asking you is. Statue of Liberty Jim, has always Jim, been a beacon of hope to the world. Jim, for people to send. Jim, do you believe people to this country? Jim, and they're not always going to speak Jim, English, Stephen. Jim, they're not you always going to be highly skilled. They're not always Jim, going to be. Jim, so Jim, I, I appreciate your speech. Down, Jim, I appreciate your speech. So let's let's talk about this. It was a, it was a modest Jim, let's talk about this. In 1970, when we let in 300,000 people a year, was that violating or not violating the Statue of Liberty law of the land? In, 19, in the 1990s, when it was half a million a year, was it violating or not violating the Statue of Liberty law of the land? Was it violating? When it was 700,000 a year, no, tell me what and years, and the, and the tell me what years, tell me what years meet, tell me what years meet Jim Acosta's definition of the Statue of Liberty poem, law of the land. So you're saying a million a year is the Statue of Liberty number. 900,000 violates it, 800,000 violates it. You're, you're sort of bringing a Jim. press one for English philosophy here to Jim. immigration, and that's never for been Jim. what the United States has been about, Steve. That that you're, but you're also, your, your statement's also shockingly ahistorical in another respect, too, which is if you look at the history of immigration, it's actually ebbed and flowed. We've had periods of very large waves, followed by periods of less immigration and more immigration, mm -hmm. and during the... You've had a period of immigration right now. The yeah, president wants to build a wall. Actually, you want to it's actually, bring about a sweeping change to the immigration Surely, Jim, system. you don't actually think that a wall affects green card policy. You couldn't possibly believe that, do you? Actually, the notion that you actually think immigration is at a historic law, the foreign-born population in the United States was, today, the Jim, New Chief Jim. Staff on Monday talk, talking about how border crossings Do you really, I, I want to be serious, Jim, do you really at CNN not know the difference between green card policy and illegal immigration? Sir, are, I mean, are you why, really why don't know that. He came to this country in 1962, uh, right before the Cuban Missile Crisis, and obtained a green card. <laughs> yes, people who immigrated okay, to this so, country so Jim, can eventually. People who so Jim, immigrated to this factual country question, through, Jim, not through Ellis Jim, Island, as a factual, and Jim, as a factual path, question, but in other ways, do a, obtain a green card at some point. They do it through a lot of hard work. And yes, they may learn English as a second language later on in life. So, but, but this Jim, whole this whole notion of well, they could learn, you know, they have to learn English before they get to the United States. Are we just going to bring in people from Great Britain and Australia? Jim, it's actually, I have to honestly say, I am shocked at your statement that you think that only people from Great Britain and Australia would know English. It's actually it reveals your cosmopolitan. Uh, bias to a shocking degree that in your mind, no, this is an amazing, this is an amazing moment. This is an amazing moment that you think only people from Great Britain or Australia would speak English is so insulting to millions of hardworking immigrants who do speak English from all over the world. Jim, have you honestly, Jim, have you honestly never met a, an immigrant from another country who speaks English outside of Great Britain and Australia? Is that your personal experience? Of course there are people who come But that's not what you said. And it shows, it shows your cosmopolitan bias. And I just want to it say... It sounds like you're trying to engineer the racial say, and ethnic flow of people into this country. Yeah, this that policy. is one of the most outrageous, insulting, ignorant, and foolish things you've ever said. And for you, that's still a really... The, the notion that you think that this is a racist bill is so wrong and so insulting. Jim, the reality is, is that the foreign-born population into our country has quadrupled since 1970. That's a fact. It's been mostly driven by green card policy. Now, this bill allows for immediate nuclear family members to come into the country, much as they would today, and then it adds an additional points-based system. The people who've been hurt the most, the people who've been... 
the people who've English been the people who've been component. the people who've Certainly. been hurt the most by the policy you're advocating are what policy am I advocating? apparently just unfettered, uncontrolled migration. The people who've been hurt the most by the policy the people who've been hurt the most by the policy that you're the people who've been hurt the most by the policy you're advocating are immigrant workers and minority workers and African American workers and Hispanic workers. Are you targeting the African American community now? You brought it up again. You said you wanted to have a conversation and not target. Is it going to be a target? This is now? what we want to do. Community, are you going to target? I'm not trying to be funny. But right, I know what you're this. saying. What you're saying is 100 percent correct. We want to help unemployed African Americans in this country and unemployed workers of all backgrounds get jobs. And insinuations like Jim made trying to ascribe nefarious motives to a compassion immigration measure designed to help newcomers and current arrivals alike is wrong. And this is a positive, optimistic proposal that says 10 years, 20 years, 30 so years from now, 10 years, 20 time. years, 30 years from now, we want to have an immigration system that takes care of the people who are coming here and the people who are already living here by having standards, by having a real clear requirement that you be able to support yourself financially, by making sure that employers can pay a living wage. And that's the right policy for our country, and it's the President's commitment to taking care of American workers. I apologize, Jim, if things got heated, but you did make some pretty rough insinuations. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll hand it over to Sarah. I think that went exactly as planned.